here we go again. Hello. Hello. You're that person. Yes. And I, I, I'm that dude who what insists on putting video games onto internet by stream and b b bothering people in your uh, your game channel. Tabletop game channel with this. Yeah. I. I am still. I, I am still of the mind that you need to update your profile image thing for Twitch because the. I just want to rub the. the uh, dust off of <laughs> Astra. Well, one of these days, perhaps, I shall get that cleaned up and do that so you do not have to indulge this f sensation feeling thing. Yes. What's up? Hi, bro. Hi. Dealing with the, uh, with the demons in the wall? Mm-hmm. Ah, yes, the man in the wall. Or the green goober-looking thing in the wall. Yeah, I was just making a wall for it. So yeah, and, and now I'm to do a bunch of stuff. Uh, now I'm trying to make sure if there's anything else that I can do in this cavern of Clanker. Do you uh, learn the ability in here? Yes. Yeah, that was the okay. in the golden wing. I don't think I was here when you got it. Right. So now I'm thinking, there's only like, there's only like one more. Like you get upgrades for the flight, I believe, but the the no, that only was two weeks. All right. So then, <laughs> yeah, it's what the running shoes is the only thing left. Yeah, I think you learned that in Gobi Valley. Yeah. I know I saw tho those, at least. Oh, let's see. Did I remember this right? Yeah. Yep. Banjo-Kazooie just gave you the base. Banjo-Tooie had a lot more. I just can't remember a lot of the Banjo-Tooie ones. Yeah, you gotta remember that for the first person mode yeah. that you had. Kazooie really? rifle Kazooie. mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, goddamn machine gun it. That is awesome. You know, I'm, I'm almost kind of getting a vibe almost of like when it comes between K Kazooie and Tui. I, I feel reminded of, of how it's like, um, when people go and play Mega Man 1, they're like, oh yeah, you know, it's classic Mega Man and all that. We know what it's like, but then it's like, no, you remember, like, all of the extra stuff that's been added into Mega Man, and you forget that, oh, yeah, charge shot and slide and all that wasn't added in until later games. Yeah, no, I... I, I remember most of it... I most remember mostly, uh, Banjo-Kazooie stuff, not Tooie. Hmm. <sighs> 
think uh, we're gonna be able to do. Uh... I will, friend. I will make so that excited. announcement when I make that announcement. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited. Just please bear in mind, oh, some of us are in needing of controlling our stress levels when it comes to figuring out what we do with certain things. I'm sorry. Okay, I think I'll at least gra try to find a way to grab that Eekumbulkum thing before I exit. Eekumbulkum. Oh yeah, I ended up coming up with a naming convention for how humans in my setting are named. Just because I remember one time, um, someone says like, okay, you've got a character named Melina, and then her brother named Argol. What, they, those names are two completely different names. So that's why I came up with a naming convention for why that would work. And what would that be? Well, it's in the, uh, it's in the player's guide. Oh. I guess I must have overlooked it. I, I only added it late, uh, yesterday. Ah, that would explain it. Okay, I guess it doesn't matter to me because I'm a robot. I'm a robot man. Robots have names too. Yes. Yeah, but I feel like the robot naming convention would either be designations from your your leader, or if in the case of a junk bot, you I don't know. You see the first thing that comes to m in the area you're in, and then name yourself it. Huh? I'm surrounded by scrap. I guess I'll call myself Scrap. I mean, I feel like uh, that would kind of depend on the. I feel like that would depend on the personality of the robot. That is also true. I mean, I like to imagine that either... That I like to imagine that a lot of junk bots resent being abandoned, so, uh... Do you... do you want to hint at who your character's creator is? Nah. Let's... If you're gonna tell me... Tell me in private, so I can fake surprise. So if it's Giz... Nah, it's not well, Giz! Why would Giz be working with Scrap? Well, he... I guess could be... Well, his core could be goblin. Everything about him is a mix match of, like, gears and goblin tech and other shit. Okay, so, no. Power. The, the, one of the... So, there is a clan of... Well, there is a, yeah, a clan or tribe, because they are hybrid of goblins that are basically a mix of clan goblins, tribe goblins, and they... They work with Scrap, because they kind of mix the style of both goblin heritages. Hmm. But yeah, Giz is not one of them. Eh, fair. Really, my guy just wants to improve himself. You know, I got this goddamn oil leak. I mean, I can plug it up, but, uh... I need, you know, uh, I'm running out of chewing gum. Yeah, I could paste some goop on there for you. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how we became friends. <laughs> <laughs> that is why the robot... But who is a hunter is working with the goddamn Cedarborn. An inventor. <laughs> this. I like it. I like it. Oh god, now I'm just thinking of it in terms of like, congratulations, you are now technically a reverse cyborg. You have some organic components installed in you. <laughs> It's funny just how much of an eclectic bunch of freaks the party is. Yay, freaks! 
continuing my trend of never having a, never being involved in a, a tabletop game where everyone is like the uh, freaking Lord of the Rings cast. You know, the, the serious, the serious characters of serious backstories. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. So I probably would get bored of that campaign. Yeah, it's... There, 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 there's a time and a place, I, I, I'm sure that's good for having just a nice, plain, you know, classic fantasy literature, Lord of the Rings style thing, but it's like, man, I do not want that yet. <laughs> <laughs> no. Honestly, I think the stand... It follow too close to the Lord of the Ring archetype. It's a little too samey. It's nice to. I like some of the familiar trappings, but I'm trying to extend beyond. I think the the big thing for it is like you can really tell. It's almost like a generational thing, where it's like um. Uh, in Extinction Curse, one of the, uh, players there, he's, he's fairly, like, he's probably in his, like, 40s or whatever. He grew up, you know, in the 80s with a lot of that stuff. And so his characters have tended to be very, uh, traditional. <laughs> because it was an era where... You don't really expect your characters to make it through a, a run. So you kind of had to keep the backstory simple. It's like, I would say they were a little bit different. Like, again, he played a goblin barbarian, which is unique, but he didn't play it... Like, he kind of played the barbarian... Like, he kind of played it straight. Like, he was a bit of a, a wholesome, uh, lovable goblin. And then when he raged, he was, well, a rage machine. Oh, so in other words, goblin version of Grimlock. Uh, but yeah, he basically was Grimlock. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 uh, how do you say, ah, uh, yes, he did that because that was traditional? I could just think, uh, because that was the style of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His second character was a goblin rogue, who was just a... Uh, he, he was a fence, like, you know, he would steal shit, sell it, so, you know, again, the goblin part is the only thing that was kind of unique, but still not too far from tradition. I admit, though, I always did want to make a, uh, uh, a Garen. Yeah. He's cut. I've never been in the, in the campaign that would kind of allow that sort of thing. Yeah. That and you have to be in the right group to do that because going full klepto, at best, you're kind of going to annoy the group to be like, okay, they'll roll their eyes and they'll go, oh, is there anything of value I can take? Or at worst, you're gonna have the killjoys who are like, I look for the guy and I'm gonna stop him. And yeah, uh, to yeah, token archives, archetypes, uh, archetypes, there are uh, cliche indeed. Yeah. Uh, Argo, a character in Dragon Rider, the clown? I mean, Argo is a character that I. It was the name of my very first D&D character, and I just... Actually, no, not even my first D&D character. The name of the character I made in a uh, school assignment for English. We had to do, like, a short story writing thing. Hmm. Neat. Never heard of Dragon Riders of Pern. It's a uh, sci-fi fantasy... Uh... Uh, literature series. Okay, I think it's something else. I think I sort of 
remember like a like a, a Disney XD show of the same. I think it was a, a similar name, but it was different. I don't know. Man, I was making a copper, so I never saw the chat. Yeah, I, I, I admit I didn't catch it myself. So thank you for catching it. Uh, and my stream is just frozen, so I'm not even able to talk. I'm not even able to see anything. But yeah, so, what? Like, what setting were you uh, confused about? My one, the one we were talking about with the xenomorph and whatnot. Yeah, that's a tell you need to find the same color one. Yeah. Uh, 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 also, I admit I did not quite catch what you were in, like. Setting Xenomorph? Uh, he, one of the questions he asked, what the heck setting is this? Ah. Uh. I want one being done for a game Argle is running, and a, a, it's not precisely a Xenomorph, but it's a Xenomorph-like character that uh, Argle is allowing me to indulge. Yeah, it's Enter class from uh, that finder, too, but instead of, like, standard gears and machinery, it's, uh... What, what, what do they call it? It's, uh, Bio organic. What? Resin, yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking uh, biotech is a good general catch-all yeah. term, but yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, that's good. The, the setting is my own original setting. That I, I plan to use in a book. I just need to get off my ass and actually start writing the book. Yeah, if you don't, I'll start sending you that one that one Family Guy clip of Stewie asking how's that novel you're writing. Yeah, but that implies he's actually started it. Yeah, maybe no, no, you should like one where Stewie Brian. Have you used that novel yet? Yeah, but that, again, that implies that he started it. Actually, in a later episode, he did finish the, it. The, it was called... Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, Brent, the joke is that Argyle has not started the book. Oh. Oh. Okay. Also, it was called Faster Than the Speed of Love, and when he somehow got it published, it was terrible. And uh, the uh, the working title for my book when I first sort of thought about it. This was when I was much younger. Um. In fact, I did kind of, this is what I called it when I did a sh the short story assignment. And it was uh, called Beyond Power. And the idea was supposed to be that love, love is beyond power. And I'm like, eh, no, not anymore. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Beyond Power works as a fantasy novel title, even if maybe yeah. not necessarily for that reason. <laughs> Anyway, I'm. I need to go out. I got some stuff I need to do. I'm gonna take a shower and do some recording. Uh, yeah. yeah, but my internet's being shit. Anyways, I wouldn't even be able to watch the stream, and that sucks. Uh. Good luck, dude. Yeah. Okay, so more. More bad water. Ah, dang it. I guess totally sand, but still. Water. Yeah. Bad touch water. Yeah, that's what I think what I used last time. Yeah. yeah. Wish the novel got published by citing with all the stat against weak guy. Ah, oh, man, again. Have not seen Family Guy in over 15 years. Yes, I'm oh, probably close to ten.
I'm also thinking, um... Like, if you do ever think about trying to take a serious uh, knock at that, uh... Writing that out, you could try doing the whole, uh... NaNoWriMo thing. Even if you don't really get the word count in, it's nice to get a start on it. NaNoWriMo? What? Uh, National Novel Writing Month. Uh. Fair enough. The... The goal is that uh, for the month of November, you try to write a 50,000 word novel. Average, so you average about a little over 1,600 words a day. Yeah. My biggest problem with trying to write it is just like... Once I get it down on paper and then read it back, I realize, oh, I am very bad at, like, the actual format. Well... That is why, uh... That is why you edit. <laughs> yes. Like, that, that, that is kind of a big part of it, is, like, you know, you do what you can to... You know, just get it frickin' out there. And, uh... Then, yeah, you, you, you go through the painful process of, uh... You know, trying to... You know... Make a thing readable. Mm-hmm. I'm figuring when it comes to doing my character, I think I might go f uh, along the lines of the stuff that emphasizes the, um, like, I'm looking to eventually take the, the fifth level feat that lets an extra limb be used. And yeah. I'm planning to take the, the predecessor feat to that, which I think is pretty neat because it allows to retrieve the stuff that's been absorbed in slime form, which I think is mm -hmm. really neat. That was the. Yeah, you know, it's it's a, like the the slime form. I think stuff is something that goes a long way for me because of um. Well, while while the insect stuff you showed was really neat, the whole I can turn into a freaking uh thing of goo and have an extra limb to mess around with really just uh touches my uh. I thought of, okay, this is something that could easily be a horror movie monster kind of thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, um, there's a game called, uh, The Hunt Showdown. And I know this is probably not how your character would be represented in, sl in its, uh, goo form. But there's a boss called the Assassin, and the Assassin is basically uh, made up of a, a bunch of cockroaches that all sort of form into a humanoid shape. Nice. 
Yeah, I don't think that's how it'll work, but that, that is a cool thing. Okay, so this is for unlocking Gobi Desert. Gobi's Valley. Yep. I think I'm gonna talk to her sister first before I progress further. Fish hanging from the ceiling. Mm. Yeah, I should probably start getting foundry set up. So now I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to manually add in your ancestry stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. Because, yeah, that is not quite uh, official stuff, isn't it? Nope. But at least it's pretty easy to add. Yeah. Is that your first? That's yeah, the first one that you see with bees. Oh no, I saw some uh, a little oh. bit earlier. That's right, because it it taunts you when you do it. When you go near it. No, that's. Huh. It 
it's only when you actually attack it. I guess it oh, just wait, says no, it after a while. Stay. I gotta wait for that to Desert. I'm I'm a fan of Gobi Desert, but still can't actually really think of what my favorite. I mean, I like. I think I like the aesthetic of Click Clock Wood. seen Multiverse of Madness. Oh yeah, I, I still have it. Uh, watch that. Yeah, it's alright. That's something at least. I'll just say that I hate how they handle a certain character. Okay. <laughs> You're not safe. Mm -hmm. I think that lost was even in this game. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was just gonna say. Hmm. I think that that is another one of those things as a kid that would have maybe go nope on this game. <laughs> <laughs> just nope. I I don't like it when things pop out of the ground and chase me. No sir. I know that actually kept me off from really getting into Ocarina for a long time because between. The Redeads and the Stall Children. That's just mm, so much no. <laughs> for, 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 for small, poor child me. Uh, the only thing that kind of uh, had me sort of hesitate for a while in Ocarina of Time, yes, of course, was the, um, the War Masters. Yeah, like, man, they made those really super creepy in 3D. Yeah. It's like, I mean, yeah, you don't want to be grabbed by the grabby hands even in the 2D games, but there's something about just how, man, they really emphasized how creepy, you know, just a giant animated hand can be. 
the the funny thing is, I was almost disappointed when I found out uh, how you can actually easily deal with them. Because I was just like, up. nah, you you roll at the last second. Ah. And when I found about that, I'm just like, man, now they're just not creepy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They, they still kind of give me the heebie-jeebies because of, you know, you hear that sound and the shadow coming yeah. down. Unless we can all agree, dead hand. Yeah, that is just the extra bit of nope. Even even by today's standards. Yeah. Just that the herky jerky motions, the way it just comes out, has that frickin' grin, grabs onto you, just mm. And there's all, also of course the fact that like you have to first face it as a child. Yeah. And of course, even then, you find out that, oh, if you play the the Sun song, paralyzes it for a while. Yeah, that does kind of help with the undead stuff, at least a little bit. Though, of course, it is the kind of thing that when um, you first see that, it's like, mm, you don't want to stop and play your flute, even if, like, it pauses the game. Yeah. Uh, what song was it that if you play it, it causes all the re-dead to dance? Um... I didn't know that was a thing. Um, I, I knew that, like, the... There was, um... Fucking, uh... The one mask in um, Majora's Mask that did that, but I do not remember that being a thing otherwise. For the songs. Money chasing all over the dang place. Yeah, maybe it was just the the mask that I was thinking about. It could be either way, just because like I know Majora's Mask did reuse some stuff in some ways, but yeah. And it's always funny, uh, I am in the game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, going back to, um, when you're looking for, like, something in particular, like, uh, you're just looking on Google, and you find it on a forum, and it's like the forum posts are, like, young, like, 2000, like in the mid 2000s, it's just like, damn, that is, uh, just feels way back. Mm hmm. L looking for anything in particular? Like, um, no, it's just about when I, when I was like, uh, when I was looking to see if. Like where the re-dead dancing came from, and I was like, oh, I thought it was uh, 
Ok of Time. Someone made a post in 2008 on Zelda Universe about why they they figured out why the reader danced. Hmm. I think my favorite representation of the Redead have probably been uh, Wind Waker. Hmm. They're not my favorite, but they're they're probably the most unique take on them in the entire series, so I can see why. They got the freaking like. Elven style scream, they've got the friggin' long ears and just Yeah. I think it's just because they do just seem straight up like they there is just like unique about them. And then the one from uh Twilight Princess is not a redead, that's a Gibdo. Yeah, like, I think I always thought of it as a redead because I associate redeads more with the freezing mechanic, but, like, yeah, I guess it was kind of the case that throughout Wind Waker they you know, did that. Mm. Just because, like, yeah, originally it was the case that, like, the Gibdos were just, like, dudes. That, they, like, they were mummified. Yeah, and like sometimes, like if you burn them away, they would become skelly dudes. Yeah. Another another Zelda enemy that I really hated and never wanted to deal with. Kind of, I would say, intimidated by, not exactly scared of. But um, it was the little the little shadow dudes that would just like start to pile up on you and slow you down and then just destroy you after that. I think there was like a snow variant, so they were white. Oh yeah, I think I remember those from uh, Majora's Mask, especially. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they were easy enough to deal with, you just either like, you know, do a spin or whatever, it's just... They'll just constantly swarm you. Yeah. I do recall them being very satisfying to kill, though, at the same time because of that, because you can slash up a whole bunch of them at once with the spin attack. Yeah.
That Sphinx offends me. Because it is not cat? Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Doggos are good too, but you know. They should know their place. <laughs> I wonder what you have to do there. Hmm. Big old frickin' schnoz. Yeah. So many doors. Yes. And I don't know what it is about about this in particular that really brings me back to a good old nostalgic day of um uh the like game guides in magazines where they would have like an over the top view like a yeah a over the top view of the map and they would like just have a page that is dedicated to being like you know this is the jump pad locations yeah I think it helped for some of those, especially where it's like, you know, some of them were like actually like pulled from in-game models that were provided by the devs. Yeah. But actually, I think it was like, I think it was this world in particular that I remember uh, having a game guide for. I never used game guides, but I actually, uh... It was my pop for one of my birthdays. He bought me a couple of uh, game guides. Mm -hmm. One was for this, and the other was um, uh, I can't remember the name of it at the moment. Holy shit! Um, it was that other rare game. It was the rare shooter where you like playing as uh, like Space Force. You had like the guy. Oh, Jet Force Gemini. Girl. Jet Force Gemini, yes. Man, that game was so good. Yeah, that, it it really fun. needs a remake. Yeah. There are some aspects I remember I found frustrating, like the whole rescuing tribals thing, but at the same time, yeah. like, it had good aesthetic, good uh, music. And just it was fun yeah and I remember it was also it kind of stuck out because it did a uh, humorous gore I guess you could say like I remember you'd shoot like you'd have so much fun just like watching the ant creatures the ant aliens heads just sort of <laughs> splattering everywhere like you could cut their heads off and <laughs> yeah and like you there'd be green goop going everywhere yeah. I think my favorite weapon on that was like the plasma shotgun. I think for me, my favorite was the the machine gun. I think if for no other reason than just because um, just the the sound effect of the machine gun was just very satisfying to hear. Yeah. Oh my god, the controls were bad. E <laughs> like, I think that's kind of one of those things that comes from, uh, you know, being an unfortunate artifact of the time in it, which it was made. It's like, we have so much better ways to do shooter controls in 3D nowadays. Yeah. Ooh, 
Ooh, we're going on a magic carpet ride. Mm -hmm. If I can get onto the magic carpet. I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Yeah, I'm not gonna sing anymore. <laughs> I'm too too tired and not putting any effort into it. <laughs> Got the mention of like the, the the gore with the bugs in the Jet Force Gemini has me thinking about how it's like thinking of that in the context of um. The, the the campaign being planned where it's like ah yes like I mean I, I guess th it would not be a freaking place in which movies are a thing but still it's like oh maybe like comics or whatever it's like ah yeah showing all this gore of these bugs and someone some poor bug person sees that it's like oh my god people <laughs> just just sell this stuff uh... <laughs> Oh no no no! Freaking! I know what's going on. Freaking hand coming out of the ground. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. A bit behind, so I didn't notice that. Yeah. Stupid. So you know how to deal with him, right there. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I thought they were invincible or something. Did 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 do did done do with ground pound. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you deal with them the exact same way you deal with the wall masters. I mean, honestly, I think more of the freaking um, thwomps in Mario 64 because wall masters. I just yeah. Uh, I, I, I just see them come down, and I just go, nope, just slash, 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 get it away Fair. from me. <laughs> Man, it'd be great if Rare Replay came to Xbox Game Pass on PC. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't. Yeah. Huh. Here's Box. Yay! I learned all the moves in the game! Yay! Oh, jeez. Yeah, right. This is... Ah. Oh. Grandpa's got a jiggy... Neener, neener, neener. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I was going to I, that um book thing I was thinking. 
Um, but that was kind of one of those things, the, the, the move thing is something I found interesting about Banjo-Kazooie with relation to, say, um, Super Mario 64, where... Like, I mean, yeah, with Mario 64, like, there's some things that you do have to earn, like the caps. But otherwise, it's interesting how by comparison, pretty much with Mario 64, you start off with pretty much your entire movement kit. Mm -hmm. Whereas you kind of unlock it in Banjo and Kazooie, which is... While I find that... Slightly annoying? Considering how much more variety it has compared to, um... Mario 64 can kind of see why. It is a lot yeah. more stuff compared to the Mario. I mean, it's part of the whole, like, you know, bringing in a bit of that Metrovania progression style. Yeah, okay. At least they that do sense. that way more in the sequel. Which is which I find kind of funny since it's like the the idea of taking the Metroidvania uh, uh, formula to a 3D environment I feel like hasn't quite been as heavily realized as it has been in the 2D space. Mm. Actually, what what do you prefer? Those games being called Metroidvanias, or what's the new term that's being coined, like seek action? Yeah, search action. Like it's. So, yeah. I personally, I still like calling them Metroidvanias just because that's what I've called them for most of my yeah. life. But um, I could see why people would go for search action because that is somewhat more. It's a neutral thing, and it um, it doesn't rely too much on a particular uh, um, game franchise like especially since like there's been like a whole lot of like Metroid and Castlevania games especially ones that don't really like match up to that formula yeah so having like it like it's so instead of saying oh it's like this series or it's like this part of this series having it be this case of um yeah, it's a search action thing. It's an action game which which encourages exploration and you know increasing power ups and all that. It, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Ah, so you are Gobi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know much of Gobi. I know now that he is a hot, tired cattle. It's kind of a funny thing thinking about how, like, terms for genres have evolved. Where yeah. it's like, you know, thinking about it at first, it's like for the longest time, like, I guess during the early 90s especially, first-person shooters were Doom clones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, far cry from that now. It's like, sure, Doom is still, like, the er example, but it's like, yeah. 
We got so many of them. Some which don't even involve that much shooting, technically, or whatever. Like, um... Yeah. Like, it's kind of a funny thing to think about how, like, you know, technically... Oh, dang it, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well. Um, but, like, when it comes to, say, um... Freaking, um... Portal. It's like, you wouldn't really associate puzzles with uh, first-person gameplay, and yet that's one of the more popular first-person games. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of reminds me of how for a long time there was a lot of people kind of trying to do what they can to kind of differentiate some things from some other things, like, um... When it came to, uh, Metroid Prime, there's kind of a big thing about how, oh yeah, it's, uh, better to think of it as, like, a first-person adventure rather than a first-person shooter, because even though you shoot, there's a lot of, like, you know, exploring and puzzle-solving rather than a focus on, uh, Freaking uh, uh, just shooting. Yeah. And I should, I, I should be careful about trying to form words while simultaneously trying to do platform. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's like, um... Uh... Like, Souls-like, and it's... Like, I think Souls-like needs a... a name change. It's like, sure, Souls... The Souls series is the one that kind of... defined the genera uh, that genre. Mm -hmm. But... There are so many souls likes. But it's just like, what would you call it? Like. It's definitely some flavor of action game. Yeah. <laughs> Reset action. I'd say call it the get good genre, but we've already got so many freaking games that kind of require that. Yeah. <laughs> that aren't necessarily souls. Oh, hello, Ruby. And then, of course, there's also, um... Like, one of the... The funny parts about it is, like... When you think of... When you think of an Indies Souls-like, it's almost always, uh, a Metroidvania as well. Hmm. Which reminds me, you still need to play Hollow Knight. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm figuring I might do that as one of my streams next, as doing that, because it's just been, it's been sitting on my Switch, being like, hey yeah. man, when are, when, when are you gonna play me? Is it one of these days. <sighs> Come join the Bugger family. Yeah, it's like I feel like I should do it, especially because yeah, I, I have played so many freaking bug characters. You know what? I might as well see where some of the uh, the hype comes from. Because I was actually thinking, like, uh, one of these days I might have to play Hornet in uh, Tui.
make her a uh, sprite. Since there are bug sprite, like I mean the sprites, most of the sprites are kind of bug based. What little I've seen of her, that feels like that would make sense. Because the uh, go ahead. I was just gonna say slightly wasp looking bug thingo. Um, not really wasp. <laughs> I mean, it's mostly just because of the name Hornet, like... Yeah, true, true. Yeah, and she does use, uh... The needle that she uses is more of a, like, stinger. Hmm. Yeah, she uses a needle, whereas, uh... Most of the other characters use a nail. But it's implied that she might be uh, a spooder. Hmm. Would not have guessed. Well, I guess that mask does go to provide some disguise, actually, then. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's not like wasps have horns, but. Yeah. I think the main implication is, uh, a lot of it is from, um, I mean, some lore stuff, but I won't say that, let you find that. But also, um, just the fact that, uh, she uses a lot of silk attacks. Like, she'll have, like, her... Her, her main form is, like, she'll throw her needle and then pull it back to herself on a string of silk. Hmm. Um, and then she also does this other one where she like spins it around her. And she also sets like traps using silk. I feel like you could also make the argument of that's being like, oh, uh, like a silkworm thing, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I can get why Spider would be the first. Ah, dang it. The the other way of playing her in uh, Tui would be a Nardi if I go full in on that spider theme. But then it's like, then you're not this tiny little creature wielding a needle and kicking ass. You're a normal sized person. So it just doesn't have the same effect. So I just love the idea of just this tiny fairy like creature that just gets in your face and just fierce small they... yeah <laughs> back in uh D&D 4e uh, a character i played once the whole concept was that she was a dragon that had been a uh, cursed and turned into a, uh, into a pixie. Mm -hmm. And the pixie, the pixie race in Flory was a bit broken when combined with a certain class feature. Like, um, I cannot remember the name of the actual class, but it was like, you had this, uh, aura around you and anything that, like, Enemy, any enemy in the aura would like have penalties and could also like you get attack of opportunities against. <clears throat> so what you do is you'd play as a pixie and you would uh, fly into their space because pixies could occupy the same space. Which then meant that they couldn't just step away from you to avoid your aura. Sounds 
sounds potentially oh. annoying for the opponents. Yeah. And yeah, you did the thing that everybody does. You get there, but it's, it starts to close, so you just kind of... Just land on the thing as it falls back up. Yeah. Go You'd be able to make it if there wasn't that goddamn cutscene showing you. Yeah. Okay. No. no, damn it! Yeah, let's try that again. No, I can't do that because I gotta step on the switch to make it open up. Game! I'm not gonna make it. Okay, I should probably grab health. Um. Uh, I was watching a video by Dog Dog the other day, where okay, I, I the first one I've watched was that um that AI character battle thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, the second one I watched was uh, speed running Super Mario Odyssey, where every five minutes he would add a new UI element, like a new HUD to his screen, and it would be a cumulative. And it's like, it got to a point where his, uh, his chat was like, um, like it was Red Dead Redemption, and they're like, add the horse, add the horse, it's like, the horse isn't the UI element, but add the horse! So, he added the horse anyway to a spot where there was already, uh, um, HUD elements. Mm -hmm. And then, it just kept on building up from there. They then put like, uh, he had Doom, so he put the gun from Doom onto the horse's head. And then he put, uh, Miyamoto, which this was just completely random, but yeah, put Miyamoto riding the unicorn. And they called it Gunnicorn. Because, like, they, they got Dark Souls, so he put the, uh, the Dark Souls health, uh, changed it to Gunnicorn. Turned Miyamoto's smile upside down, so he was a, he was a vengeful Miyamoto. Yeah, I think one day another character idea: playing an inventor with a construct companion who makes a unicorn with a gun for a horn. I like this idea. The gun corn. Yeah. God, though, that reminds me of how. Um, as I've been thinking on my character ID and like, okay, yeah, you know, you know, 
file horror thing and venture and all that, and you know, the idea is that, you know, yeah, they're using the suit. God, this fucking thing! Um, but yeah, like, it got me thinking about how it's like, okay, yeah, if, you know, I had started thinking on what if situations, like, okay, what if I went a different direction? And just got, it's like, okay, what if it was biohorror with the other thing? It's like, okay, with a weapon, okay, interesting weapon, weapon. But then it's like, oh. Construct. The character has, uh, makes additional biohorrors, and it's like, they make a Metroid. Something else freaky, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think one of the tricks I used to do for this is when you get to that last tier, you backflip up. Like... You try and like... Okay, no, no, no mind. I was right, you, I tried, and then just forgot that you can't. to try and just slide in right on that that side that is closing. I just kind of had to cut those corners a little bit. Yeah. And then you immediately into another horrible situation. Mm-hmm. Swimming. Your reward is more horrors! And what I always used to think was Mario's face. I mean, I can kind of see with how those those stones, like, they could be teeth, but it also fits as, um, like a mustache. Yeah. A big bulbous nose. Yeah. So, remember your invincibility wing. Oh yeah, like, um, I only got one gold. But, okay. Kills me, so be it. Check 
guess was what you would use to get out if this was filled. Now do this again. Okay. Yep. First I'm gonna grab that bar. Musical note. <laughs> As you continue with only one HP left. Is there anything else I could kill to sustain me? Ah, yes. I will accept the hand sacrifice. Ooh. Stuff's going on here. Base shenanigans. Wait, have you got the one flying through the cactus? Yes. Picked up the uh, the honeycomb. Right. Yes. It's time for chocolate. True, true. I have kinder. Is it a surprise? Nah, it's just the the kinder chocolate in blocks. Koozie, what's it bar stowed away for chocolate emergency? Even if, yes, it's technically not actual chocolate, it is still delicious and gives me the illusion of chocolate. Hmm. 
more eggs, just in case. Oh, there's an opening on this side. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I made sure to do when I when I introduced uh, the Elder Dragon, Sindaria. And I'm like, yeah, she you know what? She she creates her own. Uh, she's a a an Elder Dragon that's also a chef, and she has specialized in her own special uh, treat, Cinder Snacks, which are dragon breath roasted chips. What do they taste like? Well, I imagine they're kind of like uh, kettle chips. If you've ever had that style of cooking. Mm -hmm. Nice and crispy. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, like, hmm. What would the signature flavor of uh, Cinder Smack chips be? It's like, having them spicy would make sense for, like, uh, you know, she is a dragon called Cinderia Emberwing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, original. Just, you know, straight up salted is probably the most uh, standard yet popular kind. Perhaps it is a, uh, a distinctly smoky flavor. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to kettle chips, my favorite is the honey soy chicken. I've never heard of that as a chip flavor, but that sounds delicious. It is. I think for me, like, the most, uh, you know, of the kettle style chips, I think the one that comes to mind for me is, uh, I remember, um... Uh, freaking... I think a sea salt and vinegar is usually the one I think of. I know that's also kind of a general chip flavor, but... Yeah. yeah. Not the biggest fan of salt and vinegar. Hmm. I, I know I kind of have to have it in moderation at times just because it is a very, um... It can be very strong. Very sour, almost to the point of, um... It almost feels like it eats away at my tongue a little bit. Yeah. If I eat too much. <laughs> and of course you just have straight up barbecue flavor. Yeah, barbecue is pretty good. So, it just reminds me of that, uh, I think it was an Australian, no, it might have been a British comedian that was on an Australian tour. The whole, uh, joke was basically him writing a letter to Arnott complaining about barbecue shapes. Because it's like, well, they do not look like the shape of any barbecue I've ever had. Nor do they taste like any barbecue I've ever had. So it's like, what does the barbecue mean when it comes to flavor? Yeah, I mean, cause, yeah, that is kind of a thing. Like, I know, like, rather infamously for several people in, in various regions around here, will will take pride in having a very specific style and mix of barbecue. And how theirs is the only true one. Like, I think it was uh, for uh, 
North and South Carolina, it's the, the big difference is between a vinegar or mustard base. I mean, both are good. I think I preferred vinegar for a while, but then I think I've kind of come around to mostly mustard. But I guess, like, for a yeah. lot of it, it's mostly kind of a matter of, like... I, I think, for at least, at least here, the kind of quintessential flavors, that sort of a ketchup and brown sugar kind of mix. Yeah. Hell. Uh, a couple years back, I remember, um... Uh with shapes they they changed the pizza shapes they changed them to a new uh recipe a new flavor that didn't go down well hmm. and it's like what exactly is the pizza flavor it's just really like the sort of tomato sort of paste flavor a little bit of cheese maybe yeah. Maybe a little something to cover that bread feel. Which, I mean, it's covered in a lot of things. Question. What is shapes? Ah! Shapes! Shapes are sort of like savory, uh, baked sort of biscuit snacks. Almost like, a. Very similar to chips. That that is a stop and swap thing, I believe. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Again, one of the mysteries that people didn't realize back in the day. But um, yeah. So they are. Uh, yeah, basically just like a, almost like a biscuit chip kind of thing. Hmm. Very savory, and they're called shapes because like each each flavor would also have a different shape. So it's like the the barbecue shapes were um, hexagonal, I believe. Uh, the pizza shapes were more. I think they were oblong. No, no, a rhombus. Hmm. Um. Then you had like the cheese and bacon, which were like a uh, a cross. Well, not really a cross, because it was like a. I'd say a because uh, it had like. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you'd call it, because it was just a bunch of like. Um. The outline was a bunch of like squares, essentially. Forming a hmm. almost like a star. Hard to describe. Hmm. I think I kind of get what you're talking about, though, because like I feel like I might have seen. Uh... Like, I swear I've kind of seen some things where it's like, there's like, you know, you got like crackers with kind of a savory kind of taste to them. Yeah, I guess, I guess American would call them crackers. Hmm. It's just one of those things, it's like... I kind of forget that shapes are Austra an Australian snack. It's I, I find that to be an interesting thing sometimes when you come across a thing, or, or, or rather, you come to the realization that something you find so ubiquitous is not, in fact, known by everyone. almost like, I mean, not, not quite like it, but almost like a, what do you mean you don't have air here? How do you breathe? Yeah. 
there you go. You have, uh, you rescue that poor camel, only to then beat the shit out of him. <laughs> it seems to be a running theme in Banjo-Kazooie, is just... <laughs> Re re reckless and unnecessary violence upon others. <laughs> I think we still have a um... Not a jiggy, Jinjo. to do was contend with my greatest nemesis, the camera. Yep. There you go. I think, I think I had another sign the other night that this house is haunted. No. I heard a noise, had no idea, it, had no idea what it was, brushed it off. And then later on, went out to the kitchen to get a drink. Like this was at like 1am or whatever. And the microwave was open. Does it not shut? It shuts, but like the door was open. It's like it's you know you have to push the the button in to actually cause it to open. Hmm. I mean, I would not be surprised if it turned out your nan just uh didn't shut it all the way. Probably. <laughs> but there had just been some strange things. Like one time, like. The TV just kind of turned on for about like a minute or so, then shut itself off. That is weird. I'd say maybe Ruby is haunting you, but I think she'd go for more than weird inconveniences like that. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Plus, haven't lo we we aren't missing any candy. And that would be her first priority. <laughs> oh god, now I'm just imagining that being a plot line for her. Where it's like she 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 gets to she gets accused of haunting a, a place and spreading terror. Until someone points out, wait a minute, there was no candy missing. It can't possibly be her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> she she sets up her own haunt to try and find out who's doing the haunt. <laughs> yeah, that seems right. Is that, 
I know I haven't haunted this place, and to prove it, I'm gonna haunt it. Just a dangle second. That is a secret. At least, it is a thing I did not see before. Yeah, this game does like doing that. Mm -hmm. And back. Yeah, you can't because of the. Now, nah, here we go. I am speed. Okay. Just in time. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Yeah, I just saw that. Shattered as you launched. Yeah. leads back here. Yep. Of course, you can also, uh, dive bomb that snowman. Yes. And he is stupidly evil and annoying. Yes, yes, he is. myself thinking about what it would be like to have a Banjo-Kazooie style game with Astra and Ruby. <laughs>
Yeah. Like, I I'm just imagining Ruby hiding in a backpack. <laughs> that snowman is kicking your ass. Yes. Yeah. Alright, you're not health. Stupid snowman with his snowballs. Laughing. Yeah, I can just see some of the the power ups now. It's like you know, Ruby uses her ghost walk to help Astro walk through walls. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I'm thinking of it in terms of um a gameplay mechanic is like, Ruby, why do you only go through some of these walls and not others? Oh, they're ghost walls, Astra. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. I could see it being the case. Uh, 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 Astra does the the melee, most of the melee attacks, but Ruby will pop out with a gun. <laughs> yeah. And one of the one of the things you can do in uh, Banjo Tooie is there are sections where you actually play as both of them. They will separate. So. Yeah, Ruby Nash for doing that. Yeah. Oh, come, forgot. You're kin in the freaking level were not this difficult. Okay. Because you had more room to maneuver. Yeah. Gotcha. I thought it actually gave you something. That's a bit of a... Yeah, I was kind of expecting... That's such an... involved thing, and with how there is that... And there's something else you gotta do with the flying. Hmm. Unless that's later on. Let me just check out the spots up here again real quick. So I swear I remember there was something else I couldn't get in here. Uh -huh. Oh, I should actually check. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what we're going to have. There might be a spot, like, even higher up. Oh, yeah, there's that platform I opened up. Yeah, that's... I gotta fly up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least I took care of the most important thing first, which was killing the snowman. Yes. Unless you're the snowman, then that was the least important thing. <laughs> Maybe I should do the proper. No, I, just, I wanted to fly further, but I hit the B button. Well, let's see how many other further ways I can sabotage myself.
Once more with passion. Okay, yeah, this makes a lot more sense as the intended path. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And now... Oh god, I just realized something. What? Playing Banjo Kazooie in 2E, you play a Beastkin Summoner. Hmm. K K Kazooie being the the Eidolon. Yeah, or the other way around is you play a um. You play one of the bird, like a bird folk. A Kenku or something? Name. Yeah. And you take Banjo as your Eidolon and take the mount beat. So that way you're, you're hiding in the backpack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, so that, that sounds cool. You can check. This is yeah. View totals. Yeah. Still got three jiggies. Jeez. There you are also. You got like what? Ten minutes? Oh, like six minutes. Oh uh, yeah. I'll probably spend most of my time just. Chillin'. Just doing what I can here. Oh. Here yeah. is the race. Right, yeah, the 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 uh, race that you need the speed choose for. Oh, we gotta be the frickin' walrus. Seal, whatever. Because he will only race small things. Sealitize me, Mambo. And I am now a not quite round boy. Yeah. 
is easy yeah. so far. Yeah, I remember, yeah, you basically just had to try and, like, constantly get in front of him and block him. Once he gets in front, then it becomes harder. That's what she said. Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Been me being unlucky because I remember every time I tried to pass him, he'd block my path. Hmm. Wait, can you even slide it in? I can't even remember now. Well, I didn't bounce at least. Yeah. him saying his own size, I'm guessing that's where shoes come in. Yeah. I think I will go back to Mambo, change back, and that'll probably be my, uh, my stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to think. Uh, that was a uh, pretty good uh You you got all of um Gobi's Valley done? good because indeed yes yes only insightful comments on this stream <laughs> yeah yeah thank 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 you again for hanging with me in this endeavor mm -hmm. and farewell to all viewers whatever condition you are watching this on Yes.